So today we're going to be on Unit 3.4, continuing with genetics and biotechnology. And we'll actually be on page 66 today. So if you'll make sure you're on page 66 of your notes. We've already started talking about how do we understand human genetics, how do we study that. And we just looked at how do we use pedigrees to study how a gene gets passed on. But there are other ways to also study, to study genetics and also to determine what types of genes are within people or how to distinguish the genes of one person, the DNA of one person, to the DNA of another person. And we're going to use that by using some biotechnology, technology that's involving life, that's involving mainly for us DNA. So the first thing that we're going to talk about in biotechnology is DNA fingerprinting. And DNA fingerprints are actually unique band patterns made of DNA fragments. What does that mean? What does this band pattern mean? And what are these DNA fragments? Well, basically, to kind of summarize it or to sum it up before you get the details of it, a DNA fingerprint is when we take a sample of DNA, so from a person or from a crime scene or from a blood sample, we get the DNA, we basically use some enzymes, use some tools to cut up that DNA, and we cut it up in a certain sequence. Okay, so we cut up the DNA. Once we cut up the DNA, we'll insert it into a machine, and the machine will be turned on, and what happens is the different sections of DNA that have been cut will actually move down and form a banding pattern. So if you're looking at this, we have one, two, three different people and two other DNA samples. Basically, if you look at the very first picture here of what we have with our victim, these one, two, three, four bands or four lines that you see on this picture represent the DNA fingerprint of this one person. So there's one, two, three, four, five DNA fingerprints in this one picture. Now one thing to know is that this DNA fingerprint, and we'll talk about that in a little more detail in a minute, but a DNA fingerprint is going to be unique to every individual unless you have an identical twin. Remember, identical twins have the same exact DNA. So they're the only people that would have the same DNA. No one else will. Sometimes we'll have DNA that's similar to other people. We might have similar genes, but no ones will be exactly the same. A lot of times DNA fingerprinting will be used in like CSI, crime scenes, to, de to determine the source of DNA left, okay? So here in this picture, you see a crime scene one, a crime scene two, Here's the DNA in the separate crime scenes. Well, whose DNA does it match up with? And if you look very carefully, can you figure out, is it the victim, suspect one or two, that matches with crime scene one? And do the same thing for crime scene two. For crime scene two, who matches up? Is it the victim, the suspect one, or suspect two? One thing you want to make sure you're doing is you're actually looking across to see what matches up. So you can actually see that for the victim, the victim is the person that matches with the DNA found on crime scene two. Okay. On the other hand, suspect two is going to match with the DNA that's found at crime scene one. So here's suspect two matching with crime scene one, and here's victim matching with crime scene two. Do you guys see how that matches up? but this is what we're going to be doing later in class. Now, to actually make a DNA fingerprint, we do have to know the basic steps. And there's only really four basic steps to it, so it should be pretty simple to understand. But the machine that we use to make a DNA fingerprint is called gel electrophoresis. It's a really long name. But you can break it down. Gel electrophoresis. This is the machine or tool used to create a DNA fingerprint. It separates pieces of DNA based on size. So remember I said we have a long strand of DNA, big strand of DNA. We actually end up using some enzymes to cut the DNA. 
and we'll actually cut it across. So one strand of DNA might have 300 base pairs on either side, and if I, I might cut it into sections of 50, 80, 90, 100. Just depends on what type of enzyme I use. And scientists can be very specific about where they cut it. Now, steps in the DNA fingerprinting. First thing that you're going to do is that you have a restriction enzyme that's going to cleave the DNA sample at specific sequences. So, what does this stuff mean? A restriction enzyme is just an enzyme that cuts the DNA between the nitrogen bases. This is how scientists are specific. This is how they know what's going to be cut so that they can get a very specific DNA fingerprint. And cleave up here just means to cut. So here we're defining two words that you see in step one. But step one, all we're doing is we're cutting the DNA. That's all that this means. But when we cut it, we cut it in a specific way. It's intentional. We don't randomly do it because then we get random results. Next, step two, after we cut the DNA, the DNA fragments, now they're pieces or fragments. So here we'll have the fragments. We've cut them. We'll, um, in this picture, they're showing you that they'll get DNA from stains from clothes. You'll put it into some sort of container. After that, you'll use your restriction enzymes to cut the DNA. And then we'll load it into the wells on a gel. And this is referring to the machine, the gel electrophoresis machine. When you load it in there, one thing that you want to know is that we're actually next going to use electricity to force the DNA fragments through the gel. Small pieces will move further than larger pieces. On this picture, I want you to look at this for a second. This is our sample gel. Okay, This is actually showing just one DNA fingerprint. Notice that there's a negative on the top. DNA is negative. So when you actually turn on the electricity on this gel, and the gel feels similar to that agar we used at the beginning of the year when we tried to um, put some bacteria and mold onto there. It feels very similar. It's kind of like a hard jello. The top of where the electricity is plugged in is negative, just like a battery has a negative end, and the bottom is going to be positive. DNA is negative, so when you turn on the switch, turn on the electricity, it's going to push the negative DNA down to the positive end. Now what happens is that the bigger pieces kind of get stuck at the top, and the smaller pieces can move further down. Okay? Um, you might think of this as um, a horse race. The bigger the horse, the further back it's going to be. The smaller the horse, hopefully that also means it's quicker, it's going to move down here. So the smaller the DNA, the further it can move. And then the last thing is once you have the DNA fingerprint made, the gel machine has already been run through, well then you can compare your DNA samples. So that would be comparing the victim to the crime scene, or actually a father to a possible child to see if it matches up. Um, in class, we'll talk a little more about this process. Again, you will, you will want to take a minute to look back over the picture that's in your notes and see how it relates to those four steps because you do have to understand how these steps occur. Um, the next thing that we want to talk about is genetic engineering. And genetic engineering is really modifying, so changing DNA or creating recombinant DNA, DNA with more than one set of DNA in it. A transgenic organism is an organism which contains foreign DNA from another species. An example here, I don't know how well you can see these, but we'll see them again um, in class. These are actually marmosets, types of monkeys. And these monkeys actually, in this picture, have little glowing paws under a UV light. Now, how do they have glowing paws? Scientists actually took the DNA from a jellyfish insert it into the DNA of this monkey, and now the monkeys can glow as well. And so because the monkey has DNA from another organism, a jellyfish inside of it, 
it can actually glow. Um, recombinant DNA. Recombinant DNA is a form of artificial DNA, so DNA that's made, not natural, that is created by combining two different sources of DNA. So going back to our marmoset, our monkey, monkey DNA plus jellyfish DNA, well that's considered artificial DNA. That is also considered recombinant DNA. We recombine the DNA from the two species. Now we put that DNA and put it into the marmoset. Because the marmoset now has some jellyfish DNA, it's called a transgenic organism. So the process of creating transgenic organisms, the first step is to use restriction enzymes, okay, the same type that we use in DNA fingerprinting, to cleave or cut the desired gene from a DNA sequence. An example here is insulin. Insulin is a really important example to know. The second step is that that same enzyme is used to cleave the vector. Now a vector is a structure used to carry the foreign DNA. Usually bacterial plasmids, bacterial DNA is used. A plasmid is just a circular DNA found in bacteria. So here's your example. Here is a regular cell. Inside the cell we have a gene for insulin. Here we have bacteria. We're taking a plasmid or circular DNA from the bacteria and we cut both of them. What we're going to do is cut them both the same way so later on we can recombine them. Now the third step is that we'll We'll combine the foreign DNA and the vector. We'll splice them together. So here was the gene that I got from my host, or from my organism that I wanted. Here was the DNA from the bacteria. We put them two together. Now this is called your recombinant DNA. After that, the recombinant DNA is inserted into the host, reinserted into the host, usually a bacteria cell. Then the host cell will copy and produce the protein. So at the bottom we see here's the DNA that's being read, the gene. It's going through transcription and translation, two processes that we've already talked before, that are involved in protein synthesis. So make sure you take a minute to look back at those four steps of how to make, how to genetically engineer an organism, how to make recombinant DNA, and look at the picture and look at how that relates. It's really important. If you understand the picture, then you understand the next. Then the last thing here are some bioethical concerns for genetic, genetic engineering. Some reasons why scientists might agree or disagree with this, and we'll talk about this more in class. You'll want to pause this for a second so you'll have enough time to copy all of this down. But again, some questions that people really debate about. Is it a good or a bad thing that we're changing the DNA of these different organisms? And then for your summary sentence, um, write two sentences summarizing DNA fingerprinting, one for DNA fingerprinting and one for genetic engineering. And actually, if you'll take a minute and look online after you're done with all your notes, try to see if you can find another genetically engineered organism. And what DNA did it receive from another organism? And write that example down as your third sentence. 